I meant to film this video like 12 hours ago. It is the middle of the night and it's pouring. <laughs> I forgot my own intro. Hi guys, my name is Lacey of Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. And welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome myself back to my YouTube channel. I know what you're thinking. Uh, Lacey, what the fuck? Where have you been? Why do you have hair now? Where even are you? What's going on? I don't have the answer to any of those questions. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> and quite frankly, I'm not here to talk about any of that. If you want me to talk about any of that, you can follow me on Instagram. You can comment that you want me to make a video talking about things. I know, it's been years. I'd rather just talk about makeup. Is that okay with you? I wanna yap about some of my favorite products that I've been using lately. Just to, you know, dip my toes back into this, so to speak test the water, see how I feel, because I have been so ready to come back to YouTube. You have no idea. I have really been missing YouTube. I've been missing makeup. It has felt like there's been a void in my life that's been needing to be filled, and I hope you guys are excited to have me back. I hope everyone is excited to talk about makeup, because that's what I want to do right now. This is like a good old-fashioned favorites video. I'm going to be talking about, like, Favorite ways I'm using products, favorite types of products, favorite, but you know how a favorite video works, <laughs> favorite specific products, things like that. Most of which, I don't know, there's a good range of affordable and more expensive products. There's a lot of things that I've just pulled out of my pre existing collection. There's some things that are newer, some things I've bought recently, some more like brand focused things. I shockingly have a lot of complexion products to talk about, which is not usual for me. I can also hear my dog growling in the other room. Also, don't expect this setup to be permanent. I have way more books than I thought I had. Matt had to build me a second bookshelf. This isn't permanent. This is just what I have to work with right now. I'm in a computer chair. It might make computer chair noises. I don't know. Bear with me. I fully believe that 2024 is the year of affordable, great foundations. Affordable, great skincare. Affordable, great base products. I think that's where makeup headed this year and I've personally been loving to go to the drugstore, to go to Target, to go to Walmart and just browse what's around. I think shade ranges have gotten a lot better. I think prices have gone up but that's neither here nor there right now. I think there's a focus a lot on skin, dewy skin, healthy skin, skincare ingredients. It's been really interesting to watch the development of these products recently. So I know if I'm looking here and not at you, I'm sorry, I'm rusty. I have fallen onto the glowy base product slash multi-use product bandwagon. I have a couple that are kind of like my ride or dies lately. I'm gonna talk about both of these interchangeably, but mostly on this one. The Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, it's been around forever. I've owned this product forever. I've owned it for years. It's been in my collection for years. I'm sure I bought it because everyone told me that I had to and it was so great and so life-changing. And then I fell in love with the Auric version of this. The Auric Glow Lust, I actually didn't mean to include these in the video at all, but I should like give them an honorable mention. I have two shades actually. I have the shade Selenite, which used to be the original lightest shade of Auric when it first came out years ago. And then I have Morganite, which is the newer, palest, lightest shade. And I use these mixed in with foundations. I almost never just put them on its own. This is normally like a mixed in with foundation situation. Selenite more so when I need to deepen a foundation or add a little bit more yellow to a foundation because I've figured out in the last couple years that I'm very neutral, warm leaning. And a lot of pale foundations, palest shades of foundations tend to be very pink and that doesn't work for me. So this is a great mixer for that. But if a foundation already is a great shade match for me, then Morganite is perfect. This is the one that I would use mixed with primer, mixed just on, well, for, for actual highlighting. I'm sorry, I told you I was rusty at this. Again, this isn't what I meant to talk about in this video though, so they're gonna go live down here for a second. In the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I'm the shade Fair Pale, shade one. Ooh, I haven't done a Beauty Guru thing in a while. Ooh, ah. Uh. And then the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, which is the 
obvious Charlotte Tilbury dupe. It also comes in the glass bottle. When this first came out, I was, I grabbed the shade, I think it was the shade one, and that shade sucked. It wasn't fair at all. It was more light, <laughs> light to medium, I would say, and yellow tone. And then I guess me and everybody else had the same complaint because they released the shade zero when you're so pale that your shade is literally the number zero. These to me do the same exact thing. I'm gonna talk about e.l.f. mostly because I use them the same exact way. I use it as a step in between priming and foundation. So instead of mixing it with my foundation the way I would Auric, I put my primer down and then do a face of this, almost like pre-foundation, like full face, and then I put a foundation over top of that, normally a sheerer foundation, and then I have the glowiest, best skin day ever. And then my makeup looks incredible and I love it so much. And it adds coverage also because there are a lot of skin tints on the market right now. And I've bec become, I've reluctantly become a fan of skin tints, but I do have days where I want more coverage. My skin routine isn't perfect. She's getting there. My skin has been looking actually great lately, but she's not perfect and I also, live in a swamp the humidity breaks me out all the time i'm back in new jersey i'm back on the shore it's literally humid and disgusting all of the time here so when i do break out for those reasons i want the extra coverage and i just because i'm so dry and i struggle so hard with dull dry skin i want to look as shiny as humanly possible even on with dewy foundations i add this baby and it just makes everything look ugh, so much better i have heard through the grapevine, and by the grapevine I mean through TikTok, that this breaks people out. I don't personally have that experience. I think it's because there's squalene in it, but my skin does really well with squalene, so I, I cannot confirm or deny. I'm also not a fan of labeling one product as being like, this breaks everybody out, because everyone's skin is different, everyone's skin is sensitive to different products, everyone's skin reacts differently to certain things. For me personally, I can't notice a difference in my skin quality when I use this or not. I've also heard through the grapevine that this expires on people pretty fast, but I don't know, I've had mine a while. And, oh, I love the doe, the doe foot. Ooh, be a good moment. I love the doe foot that this and Charlotte Tilbury have. Yeah, mine just smells like nothing. And I've had it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've had mine like a hot minute and it really, I haven't seen a problem, but I love this. I, lo I think it's just as good as Charlotte Tilbury. I really do. I think you can get one or the other and they're gonna accomplish the same thing. It's really just a matter of your budget and if you want the Charlotte Tilbury name or not. Similar glowy base product, the True Match Lumi Glotion from L'Oreal. I am, of course, in the fairest shade 901 Fair Glow. I feel like the other shades in this line have almost like a like a tanning drop kind of effect where they're a little bit bronzier and I think they're meant to add a little bit more color to the skin. This does not do that. This reminds me very much of old school Becca primers. I don't remember what it's called. I think it was the backlit primer. The one that almost had like a blue iridescence to it and it gave you dewy skin. This is so similar. It's not like this at all. This They couldn't be more opposite in my opinion. This has coverage, is thicker, feels more like a foundation. This feels exactly like a lotion. Like they really hit the nail on the head with that name. It absorbs really fast. It feels a little bit moisturizing for me personally. And when you swatch it and when you put it on your face and your skin, it almost doesn't look like it's doing anything, but then you wear it underneath foundation and you're like, oh, okay. It makes every foundation look like healthy skin. And again, I've heard through the TikTok girlies that this is breaking some people out. I can't say I've had that experience personally. I do think, does it have skincare ingredients in it? Does it claim to? It just says instantly hydrates and luminizes. And I have found that to be the case. I use this constantly. I use this, I think, more than the L for the Charlotte Tilbury. And also, I've gone through a lot of it. I can see in my light, you probably can't see on camera, that I have used like a third of this already and I haven't had it that long. So that's a testament to how much I use this. This I use before primer. So it's my step in between skincare, this primer foundation. And that seems to work best for me personally because it's kind of 
like it claims to be more like a moisturizer. So this is for when I'm not trying to add coverage, I just want the glow. Lumi Glotion pairs best, in my opinion, with what might be my new favorite foundation, the new About Face, The Performer foundation. I am obsessed with this foundation. Not to go full 2018 YouTube, I'm obsessed, but I really am. I'm wearing the shade F1 Neutral. I think this is by far the best match in a foundation I might have ever found, ever. It has a doe foot, and I don't know if you guys caught that. <laughs> I'm forever 10 years old, I swear to God. I feel like the little, like, <laughs> sphincter thing that pulls off the excess product of the doe foot is like a hair too tight on this product. So I feel like sometimes when I pull up the wand, if I'm not being careful, like the idiot's little dribble of foundation will go flying. And sure enough, it did totally just get on my skirt right now, but that's fine. Some people say having a doe foot on a foundation is unhygienic, but if I'm washing my face, putting skincare on, and then immediately doing my foundation, I feel like that's not a problem because I'm not sharing foundations. I don't know, maybe if you have a problem, put this on the back of your hand or something first. For me, swipe and go. This has become one of my favorite foundations, and I will say when you first apply it, it is a true foundation. It's not a skin tint. It claims to have skin benefit properties. It claims to be hydrating. For me, it just kind of looks like typical soft matte foundation when you first put it on. That's why I like to pair it with a glow primer. I can get really good coverage with it. You can sheer it out. I like it with the brush. I like it with the sponge. You can build it up really nicely. I think I have a couple layers on today just because camera lights, you know, doing doing what I gotta do. I've, oh man, the bottle is already fading. Whatever, it's plastic. What I love so much about this foundation is how it wears because I swear, it looks almost like, oh, it's fine, it's foundation, and it, it blends, it's, it reminds me very much so of the Rare Beauty foundation and how easily it blends and how it sits. Anyway, you put it on, you're like, eh, it's foundation. What makes this so good for me is how it wears. As it warms up to your face, as it wears throughout the day, it looks so good. It just looks like the best version of your skin. I will say I do have to set it, especially with the glasses. If I don't set it, then it will immediately crease underneath where my glasses sit. But I set every foundation for that reason. And I also just feel weird not setting foundations no matter how dry my skin is. That's just me personally. But I could wear this for like 10, 12 hours and it still looks great on me. And in fact, it looks better as I wear it. And the shade range is really good and the price point is really good. You can get it at Ulta and I think it's like $22. When I'm not wearing the About Face foundation, I am a skin tint girly for the first time ever in my life. I've never been a skin tint girly ever. The L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Serum Tinted Serum, blah, 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 1% with hyaluronic acid, yada, yada. <laughs> you can tell I go for things that claim to be dewy, claim to have skincare properties. The shade 0.5 to 2. Very light, pale. This looks a hair, not e more than a hair. This looks too deep for me in the bottle. But then once I apply this and sheer it out, it's totally fine because that's how sheer it is. It really is, tr to me, like a true definition of a skin tint. It really just barely evens out your skin discoloration and that's pretty much it. But it does have a nice glow to it. Like if you have the chance to see this in person and pick up the bottle, the bottle has like a nice glow to it. You can see the glow that this skin tint has. It's like shimmery. And this, like the About Face foundation, wears so good throughout the day for me. It really warms up and looks skin-like and because of the skin tint it fades gracefully. I love this for a longer day of wear. Whereas the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour skin tint, I'm in the shade 110. Again, probably the lightest shade. This is so luminous in the bottle. I don't know if you can see with the lights. It really almost looks like a liquid illuminator. It has a dropper, which I cannot hate more. Cannot hate more that both of these are droppers actually because I feel like droppers make a mess. So these are ones that I actually do. Oh my god I have foundation on my arm. So these are ones that I do drop on the back of my hand first. This claims to be 24 hour wear. I don't find that personally to be the case. I think the L'Oreal skin tint wears much better and longer than the Maybelline than the Maybelline. What the fuck was that? 
I told you I'm rusty. This to me doesn't also, that's not good English. This to me also doesn't seem that skin tint like. This to me almost feels more like a foundation. I don't know who they think they're fooling calling it a skin tint. This is more like a very dewy, hydrating looking foundation hybrid skin tint. I think it has more coverage, you can build it up nicer, and it's so dewy and it's so glowy. If you're about the dew life, if you're about that like, is she wet, is she sweaty, what's wrong with her life, then this is the one I would check out. I really also want to try the new Revlon skin tint. I've heard really good things. One of my friends actually sent me photos of her wearing it and I was like, well, holy shit. So that's on my list to grab probably this weekend. If I go to the store this weekend, that's on my list to grab. I've also heard things about, heard things, I've heard good things about the Wet n Wild skin tint. I've heard good things about the Neutrogena skin tint, which I've never tried a Neutrogena makeup product ever in my life. Like many millennials, the only Neutrogena I've ever tried has been like face wash that I had no business using as a teen and like destroying my skin with. I've never tried any of their makeup but I am curious because I'm trying so many skin tints if you guys want me to do like a drugstore what's new with the drugstore foundation skin tint kind of video let me know because I have a couple other foundations I've picked up that I've been trying that I have thoughts about. I don't know it's been kind of like a pseudo project for me every couple weeks at the store if I see a new skin tint or a new like dewy foundation to grab it and see how I feel about it. I don't know why I've never really cared about foundation before but lately it's something that I'm interested in. So if you're interested in it let me know because I genuinely feel like a lot of the things I've tried at the cheaper price point from Target, from Walmart, from Ulta, things like that are like light years better than some of my high-end foundations. Like when I moved last year I I must have just bought the new KVD Good Apple Foundation and the House Labs Foundation and the y, the YSL Foundation, not YSL, the LYS, that's the one, the LYS Foundation. And I've heard good things about all of those. People rave about all of those, but I think all of them are just okay. So I don't know. I think that's where my love of these new affordable skincare products come from, my affordable foundation products come from. If you're interested in them too, let me know. Something that is not base product related because I don't really give a shit about <laughs> concealer or powder. I've been using the same ones I always use. I have one brow product to talk about. The Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. This is my second tube of it. Ooh, ah. <laughs> this seems like it's not gonna do shit. It's just a mascara wand with some liquidy wax. And then the one cool thing I will say about this, when you pull off the cap, you get more brush options. You get like a little comb and a more like fluffy bristle brush. So you have three brush options essentially with this product. One tube has lasted me a long time. Like I said, this is my second tube. I only recently got this. I had my first tube of this. How many times can I say tube? I had my first tube of this for like a long time. And what I love about this is because I'm not giving up fluffy eyebrows for a long time, if ever. Let me get close up. It really put like holds the hairs. It does the job you want it to do, right? I think I have some pretty thick half Italian eyebrows. <laughs> and with this, I'm able to really fluff them in the direction that I want and then carefully sculpt like what directions I want the individual hairs to go. I don't personally do the like laminating like straight to your forehead thing. I just like foofy. Did I stick my fork in an electric socket? What is wrong with this person kind of eyebrows but with a little bit of a defined shape and this has great hold and it holds all day and I love it so much and I never check for Too Faced and you all know that that hasn't changed over the years I have not given a flying fuck about Too Faced in so long but this I heard I think I don't even know I don't know why I tried this I don't even know who I heard say this was good but it's great and I don't want any other eyebrow product. The only thing that I'm curious about is there is a got to be glued version of this. Got to be glued the hairspray hair product brand. And when I was a scene kid in the early millennia, 
I used to use the Gotta Be Glue hairspray and the like yellow fire hydrant bottle to spike up my scene hair and I swear by that. So if the eyebrow product is anything like that, then yeah, I would love it and I would really like to try it, but I don't know where it's sold, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for it. But this is worth the more expensive price point. To me, for me to spend like 25 bucks on a tube of eyebrow gel is a, is a little much for me, especially with everything I'm dealing with in my life right now, that's a little much. But for how long this stretches me, but for how long this stretches for me, that is worth it, in my opinion. There's only one blush that I keep reaching for over and over that I've really noticed that I'm doing that with. M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blush. I think I own every single shade of these. They're baked blushes, they're shiny, they give good color, good radiance to the skin, but the shade that I am obsessed with, that I actually, I've really made a dent on this dome actually, now that I look at it. I keep looking at myself, I'm so sorry. The shade Rococo, which is this beautiful, neutral, chocolatey, earthy brown that seems too deep for my skin tone, probably is too deep for my skin tone. It literally looks like soil from a potted plant. It's so good. It doesn't really have, maybe it has the lightest kiss of like terracotta to it, but for me this feels like a warm brown with like not really any red to it. I didn't bring a makeup wipe that was stupid on my behalf. I of course love this on its own. I love the radiance that these blushes give. I love how easy they apply. I think they look so stunning. But my favorite way to use this and why it's in my favorites video is exactly how I wore it today. So I started off with the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Blush Palette. And I started off with the shade Peach, which is, as the name suggests, a beautiful light peach shade, but it was almost too peach for the look that I was trying to achieve. So if I take a fluffy brush and I hit my Rococo blush and hit it over on top of whatever blush I'm wearing, it tones it down and it brings it back to earth and it makes it look a little bit more natural and it blends into my bronzer better and I just love the effect that that creates. I love doing darker, more alternative, gothy looks and then hitting whatever blush I'm wearing with this on top as a topper. It just tiles the color back and makes blush look a little less garish if it's too pink or too red or whatever and it just makes it look more natural and more seamless while also giving radiance especially to a flat matte blush like those Lunar Beauty blushes. It's so good. I keep doing that over and over. I can't stop with that. It's like this with every other blush. That's the combo I've been doing lately. I've been loving to mix blushes like across the board, but I almost always want to grab for this one to top it off with. There's one bronzer that I felt like was worth talking about, even though it's fairly new to my collection, but this one is for the fellow pale girlies out there. R.E.M. Beauty, which I believe is Ariana Grande's makeup brand, I know there's been some opinions about her lady lately, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I was in an Ulta spending a gift card that my best friend gave me for my birthday, and I happened to walk by the new display of the REM blushes and bronzers, and I saw this shade sent to voicemail, which is the lightest shade, and I was like, wow, they've done it. And by they, I mean REM and the makeup world. They've done it. They made a pale enough bronzer shade that will suit my exact needs because this barely registers as being a bronzer on my skin tone. And when I tell you that is so hard to find when you're as fair as I am, it's a really soft powder. It's not, hmm, what's the best way to phrase this? The bronzer I've been using before, before getting this pretty much every single day, like I've hit Massive Pan and I plan to replace it once it's gone. I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury bronzers and they have a very light, fair, friendly shade as well. This, oh my God, it barely registers as I'm putting powder on my face, which is exactly what I want. Like, can you even see that? That's where I swatched that Rococo blush. Can you even see that? And it's such a soft powder. It's not stiff the way the Charlotte Tilbury powder is a little bit stiffer. It blends so beautifully because it's such a soft powder. It feels like silk touching it. It's so soft. I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> it looks like almost nothing. It's maybe, if I'm gonna be nitpicky, a hair, a kiss, a touch too warm. I think my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer 
stays more in true neutral territory, which is what I prefer. This is maybe like dancing around being too warm. But when I blend it out, I personally don't pick that up. It looks so good. I really like the price as well. I could see myself totally panning this and getting another one because bronzers are one of the only products that I tend to pan and then replace. In typical lacy, spooky lips and fat hips fashion, I had a ton of highlighters. I really had to dial it back and be like, what are you actually using the most? This is something I've had in my collection for a long time and I randomly dug it back out and I fell back in love with it. The Milani Baked Highlighters. I'm in the lightest shade, of course, 110, they'll say Perla. You could tell me this is an Hourglass powder. You could tell me this is a Bobbi Brown powder. You could tell me this is a Charlotte Tilbury powder and I would believe you because it's that wonderful, expensive feeling baked powder that almost kind of looks like nothing on the skin. She's a very fair pink. A champagne-y pink almost. Almost my skin tone. <laughs> the thing about a baked formula like this is you can make it look so natural, so like that's just your skin doing that, that you're so hydrated, you've had so much water, you've gotten so much sleep, your skincare routine must be fabulous. You can make it do that and you can also make it blinding and it's so good. It's that stereotypical thin, silky, baked, almost powdery feeling formula without being powdery. I can't, this this is just sitting on the shelves of your CVS. It's so good and I had it in my collection for years and I randomly picked it back up and I was like, wow. And she, it's like, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like those 90 mo 90s movies where they she takes off her glasses and they're like, oh my God, you were hot the whole time. That's that Milani bronzer. Bronzer? Highlighter. That's that Milani highlighter. Something else that's been around a while been in my collection for a while, but no one really talks about that I've seen, but I think they're incredible. These Tarte Amazonian Clay Highlighters, I think there's only two shades, and I own them both. Again, same with Too Faced. I'm not checking for Tarte. I haven't checked for Tarte in years. I haven't cared at all about what Tarte's been doing in years, but I think, I don't even know who I saw review these, and I saw how beautiful they were, and I was like, oh, okay, or I think, was I in a store and I swatched it? I don't know. I cannot tell you how I came upon these. I can just tell you that I can't stop using them. There's only, I, I'm pretty sure there's only two shades. Champagne Glow and Rose Gold Glow. Champagne, Rose Gold, both pretty fair friendly. I would have assumed on the online swatches alone that neither of these would work for me, but I find that both work for me personally with how fair I am, they work great. They kind of remind me, again, actually, they're pretty thin, silky powders, very similar to other things I've been praising. They don't have that like heavy, thick, silicone-y feel that highlighters of like years past used to have. Like when you think blinding highlighters of 2018, let's say, it was a more dense, thick powder that really clung to the skin and therefore emphasized texture and you could see all your pores and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know that you know. This is so much lighter, so much silkier and again they just get so blinding and I'm doing a terrible job swatching. Okay I'm doing my best but they really get so blinding and rose gold you would think would be way too deep for me but that's actually this is the highlighter I'm wearing today is rose gold. I have it all over the Rococo blush. I have it on my nose, I have it on my high points, my chin, my lip. I think personally this shade goes exceptionally well with the Rococo blush. It goes exceptionally well with more neutral tone blushes on me, period. More brown tone blushes on me, period. And I love it. It's so unassuming. Like I don't hear anyone talking about it. Nobody seems to care about these blushes, but I keep reaching for blushes, highlighters. It's like three in the morning. Nobody's talking about these, but I'm going to talk about them. They're so good. Can you get things that are the same thing cheaper? Probably. I just happen to like them. And I happen to like their like crinkly little packaging. This baby though, this, and I don't want to be hyperbolic in this video. Is that how you pronounce that word? I don't want to, you know, <laughs> be ridiculous. But this actually might be, and with fingerprints and all, might be my new holy grail 
highlighter and I don't say that lightly and you all if you've been with me a while maybe you're new and you don't know but if you've been with me a while you know how many highlighters I have. I have even more than you think I have. I have so many more than the last time I've told you about how many highlighters I have. But this bitch, the new Iconic London Lit and Luminous Baked Highlighter, it's only in one shade, which I realized sucks, but I'm gonna tell you why I personally am like foaming at the mouth for it. Another baked highlighter. I'm gonna cover the mirror. Another baked highlighter. This is like, if the ABH Amorese highlighter, which I know was recently re-released under a different name, and yes, I bought that. <laughs> this is like if the Amorese highlighter was a shade lighter and therefore could work for people with much fairer skin tones going into more probably medium skin tones. I don't know if this would work for a deep skin tone. So similar to that Milani powder. It's a baked dryer formula. A lot of higher end luxury formulas are very similar to this, but she gets blinding. This gets, to quote Teresa, <laughs> gets like alien slut, you can see her from space, blinding. It really, really can go there. It can also be more subtle, blend into the rest of your products. I find that it blends really nicely and that's another reason why I like this because it's very easy and effortless to work with. But for how blinding it gets, and because it's that baked formula, it doesn't emphasize texture. It doesn't emphasize pores. It's not that sticky, dense, silicone formula that just sits heavy on your skin. It's so lightweight and so good. And I have never really cared about Iconic London before. I think I saw Robert Welsh using this, and I was like, oh, I guess I need it. And I happened to pick it up one day. And I have a hard time using any other highlighter. Like I use a different highlighter today to prove my point about like all of my cheek products meshing well together, but I tend to reach for the Iconic London highlighter most days because I know it's gonna blend well over any single blush. I know it's gonna blend into my skin tone well. I know it's gonna look good on my nose, on my eyes, blah, 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 the whole nine. It's so good. Okay, when it comes to eyeshadow, <laughs> And again, if you've been with me a hot minute, you know how I feel about eyeshadow. If you haven't been with me, maybe this is your first time watching me. I have so many eyeshadow, eyeshadow palettes that they're in my walls and my floorboards. I am a menace to society when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. They have always been my bread and butter. They've always been the thing I collected the most. I have toned down. <laughs> For my standards, I have toned down how many eyeshadow palettes I buy recently. Still buy more than the average person needs, but I have massively toned it down because a lot of things just don't appeal to me lately. There's a, a couple brands that I feel like I'm always checking for and then I'm always in their corner. And then a lot of high-end brands I really don't care about. I feel like overall, a lot of brands just have stopped caring about eyeshadow palettes and have really pivoted towards foundation, skincare, things like that. Even fragrance, I've seen a lot of brands pivoting to. I'll tell you what I'm wearing today and that will set the tone for like how I go about discussing this. On my eyes today, I have the new Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge Palette, which I originally wasn't going to buy. And I wasn't gonna buy it because Huda palettes, for some reason, always have a goddamn goo shade. And in this instance, it has this black goo shade. And I don't like it, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna probably tape plastic over it so that it doesn't get gross. But I saw looks being made with this. I saw reviews, I fell in love. I love the tones of these grungy neutrals for one. They are more neutrally cool. There's a lot of like reds and purpley kind of undertones to some of these shades. Especially like here you can see there's like more peaches and mauves. And then you have these great neutral browns with these incredible textured silvery shades. Some that skew more true silver, some that skew more purple. They're so textured and interesting, which is what I originally fell in love with the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette. I still love that palette for that reason. That palette didn't have a goo shade and then the rest of the Huda palettes had goo shades after that. Also the price point, not my favorite. I don't like to spend I think this is like $65. That's not 
where I feel comfortable spending on an eyeshadow palette lately, just in my own life with my own situation, my own financial situation. My priorities with how I spend money on makeup have changed quite a bit. It's tough for me to spend this price point on a palette, just to be honest. But the color story reeled me in. I love it so much. I'm wearing mostly mattes from this palette today. And I paired it with the Lunar Beauty Siren Sunset Palette first. Let's take a minute. <laughs> Let's take a minute for the artwork on this palette. Like, are you kidding me? Manny always does such a good job on his outer packaging. He really makes you feel like you're buying like a nice experience. I will give him credit. Manny, I've had my problems with you in the past, but lately, lately I, I like what you're doing. Keep up the good work. The inside of this palette though. This could be a thumbnail. These neutrally cool leaning grayish browns and then these pops of colors and I love that he included more dimensional multi-chrome-esque. I won't say they're full multi-chromes. They're not to the level that an indie like Cleona multi-chrome would be let's say but these textured shades in the middle that are different than the traditional like metallic foils he normally has. So good i'm wearing this shade what's the shade called coastline that's what's all over my lids today let me i haven't done this in a while <laughs> oh goodness it's been a minute i love this this is so exactly my makeup point of view lately and i think instead of going into like and i love this palette and this palette and this palette which i might do a little bit <laughs> but instead of doing that this has been my wheelhouse lately i still love colorful shadow don't get me wrong, I still love bright, beautiful colors, but these cool leaning neutrals have so been what I've been wanting lately. It's so been what I've been about lately. And this is, was such a good purchase for me. I reach for this constantly, this palette. I reach for these mattes constantly because I love the tones in this palette. I'm so happy that we've stepped away from like 35-0 level warm shades and now things tend to be more neutral cool i'm so happy that cool tones are having their moment in eyeshadow right now oh there's so many palettes i want to talk about but okay but there's a compromise here because this video is already very long the compromise is that i'm thinking about doing a basic bitch palette video <laughs> if you remember back in the day years ago teresa's dead and i collabed on a video called our favorite basic bitch palette which was our more neutral less fun less colorful types of and palettes as Teresa would say and then Teresa has since been doing them ever since and I love them I have been debating doing an updated version of that video that is more these like spookier themed palettes that I've been gravitating towards so please let me know if you want that I will be hitting a couple highlights in this video though so if I talk about palettes in this video and then readdress them again in that video don't hold it against me I warned you Colourpop has been making my dream palettes lately and it's been the most boring shit ever and you're really gonna look at me and be like what is wrong with you but Oh my god, I cannot tell you how much I've been using this Cloud9 palette. And then once I open it, if you, have, if you haven't already seen it, listen. I know. But the tones of these mattes, that's exactly my wheelhouse lately. I cannot put this there. <laughs> I have a desk here and it's been a balancing act. This is so my wheelhouse lately. And what I really love to do is do a so pale almost white gray look ugh it hits every time cloud nine pairs really well with the troublemaker palette this is more in the realm of that huda beauty grunge palette where the mattes have more purpley kind of mauvey almost red undertones but with those grays these are sister palettes like together she can conquer the world she can do no wrong this is cheating and this is again like a why did I purchase this when I own those other two palettes? This only just came in the mail for me a couple days ago, so I can't really technically include it in a favorites video because I haven't used it enough to rave about it. But let me tell you, this... Oh, I almost dropped it. This is so elemental palette, which leans more gray-blue. It's like the more gray-blue version of those other two palettes. I love it. I love it so much. This denim blue right here. Are you kidding me? This is so... Oh. 
Ugh! Very similar wheelhouse. The Odin's Eye Christmas Eve palette, which Odin's Eye is one of those brands, like I mentioned before, I'm always checking for them. I'm always gonna probably pick up what they've what they've made eventually. I think the only palette excuse me, that was my chair. I think the only palettes I don't have from Odin's Eye currently are the ones that were like stone themed. But now that I'm into neutrals, I should look into getting those, but I don't currently have them. This Christmas Eve palette though, these blues, these grays, these purples, there's like more multi-chrome kind of shades. They're textured, they're interesting. This dirty like baby puke mustard shade, so good. I did not get their holiday palettes from this year. This is from their holiday collection from last, the previous two holidays ago, but then they re-released it again this holiday season. This is so good and so what I'm about lately, these deep blues, ugh. All of the spooky palettes that Glam Light came out with. I don't, hmm, I should say not all of them. I got all of them. I think how they released them was weird if you were there and you were, you know, paying attention. They released like one spooky collection in the beginning of the year, another spooky collection in the middle of the year, another spooky, it's just weird. But anyway, Friday the 13th palette. I love these more muted colorful shades. I think this is my favorite color story of all of the glam light horror movie themed palettes, but I feel like the shimmers in this one are harder pressed and a little bit harder to work with than some of the other ones. I don't know if that's just my experience, but I like how multi-dimensional and glittery they are. I've been using the fuck out of these two palettes though. The Chucky palette, which is like goth kid dream because it's just reds and blacks and silvers. This, if I would have had this in my like hot topic high school days, oh my god, because this was everything I did in high school. I did black eyeshadow, gray eyeshadow, and red eyeshadow. That was like all I ever did with thick raccoon eyeliner. Ah, uh, I love this so much. It's so nostalgic for me. More grays though. Spanking this palette. More grays, the ghost face palette, which I originally was not gonna get. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I was actually shit talking it and I take it back. I'm eating those words. I'm so sorry I take it back. The grays, man, and then the duochrome silvery shades. One's like purple, one's more taupey, one has like a green flip, one has a blue tint. I reach for this so much, I reach for the mattes in this so much. I love the metallics. This is such a fun palette to like do a neutrally gray look and then hit with a really colorful eyeliner in the waterline. Love it so much. Lethal Cosmetics. I don't even know what this palette's called. <laughs> I should Google that real quick. Please hold. Okay, thank you for that brief intermission. Lethal never puts the titles of their palettes anywhere. That's like one of my complaints with them. Anyway, have you ever seen a more lacy outer packaging? First of all, this is definitely an instance where the outer packaging was a factor. I love the inside, but I saw the outer packaging and I was like, ooh. The Midnight Serenade palette, which is probably the warmest palette I'm discussing today, it has these incredible duochrome metallics on top of just these great mattes because Lethal's matte formula is iconic and amazing. But these duochrome metallics are really so good. I've been shockingly reaching for this a lot because it's colorful-ish. It's pretty muted for what I tend to go for when it comes to colorful eye looks, but this has been a great one for me. I've loved this one so much. Nomad Cosmetics is another one where I pretty much check for every single one of their releases. I think I have most of their palettes. The Royal Europe palette, which has multi-chromes again in it, which really jacks up the price a lot on these, but I love these royal tones. They're so good. I love the row of multi-chromes in this. Ugh. I actually though love the New Zealand stargazing palette more. First of all, I love this cover. Beautiful cover. Again with the multi-chromes though. And again with these cooler, cooler leaning with a pop of peach, mattes with grays, with purples, with blues. This has been a very lacy color story lately. I think their formula has gotten so good over the years. I think older Nomad palettes aren't this good. I think older Nomad palettes are not that special. Their metallics especially are not that special. 
These feel special and worth the price. The mattes are really easy to work with. They're very bright, very vibrant. And then the last like chunk of palettes I need to talk about, which is more like a moment, an era, a brand, an obsession, a way of life. <laughs> I am such a Blend Bunny Cosmetics stan. And I don't say that lightly, but everything they come out with, I'm like, yes, genius, give me more. <laughs> I, I think I own most of their palettes. I know I'm missing at least two of them. I don't know if I'm missing more than two, but I know I'm missing at least two. I'm gonna hold up their newest palette while talking about them because the point stands through every single one. This is the Machina palette. I love the cover. I love how Blend Bunny palettes are organized. They typically are almost always in like a gradient where you have a row of the deepest shade to the lightest shade. You get a metallic for every single color. I love this color story because the colors are almost primary in a way that's very unique to my collection. I don't have shades quite like this very often in my collection. I think their metallic formula is awesome. They have very duochrome flippy, sparkly, special shades, again, arranged in this really pleasing way that I think is really good for beginners, especially. If you're someone who is new to colorful shadow, you don't really know where to start, how to build a look, you get that perfect gradient that teaches you like what order to put your placement in, to place your eyeshadow in rather, how to pair these shades together is so good. And the formula is spectacular. I reach for a Blend Bunny palette almost every single time I do my makeup because there will almost always be like a specific shade of a certain color that I know that a Blend Bunny palette will have or something that I like a blending color that I really want or something like that. I almost always reach for them as like my catch-all utility palettes. They are perfect. I'm so obsessed. I cannot sing the praises of Blend Bunny enough. And I also, one of my best friends is also really obsessed with Blend Bunny. And we are constantly messaging the other being like, did you see what they post on Instagram? Did you see what they're teasing now? Did you see this? Blah, blah. <laughs> it's just like the brand I'm probably the most excited about lately. Let's wrap up with some lip shades though. Let's hurry it up. I've been talking at this camera for a very long time. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you should definitely follow me on Instagram though if you don't. My Revlon lipsticks. <laughs> I have been just having the best time of my life slowly collecting Revlon lipsticks over the past year or two, I would say. So every time I do, I have to put a bunch of these down, oh my god. Every time I do my grocery shopping, household shopping, whatever, if I'm in a Target, a Walmart, a grocery store, I will swing by the makeup section, I will swing by the Revlon lipsticks, and maybe I'll grab one or two that week. Two if I'm feeling you know, extra zesty, but normally just one. And I've slowly just been collecting a bunch of colors that way because so many iconic 90s lip shades were Revlon lipsticks. And I've been really lately into that 90s grunge aesthetic, especially when it comes to lip colors. So it's been fun to just slowly collect these classic shades, but they also just have a nice formula, a nice comfortable formula. It's a good price point. It is so hard to narrow down which ones I wanna talk about. I own a lot of Revlon lipsticks. I own way more than what I even just held up. So if you want a video of me going through my Revlon lipstick collection, let me know. Today, I'm wearing the shade Iced Mocha. It is a pearl finish, which means it has some shine to it. Let me get the highlighter off of my hand. It's like a deep brown with some black in it, with like a little bit of a grayish black hue to it. So it always just kind of like edges up a look, makes me look a little bit more gothy, a little bit more like darker, deeper. I'm actually wearing it all over a lip pencil today. I'm wearing the Makeup Shack lip liner in the shade Fudge It as like a base and then I'm wearing Ice Mocha on top of it because it is fairly sheer because it is that shiny pearl 90s <laughs> kind of finish. But I also reach for Chocolicious a lot, which again, just a deep brown. Can't go wrong. This is the cream finish. Coffee Bean is a newer one. Another brown. 
<laughs> another 90s looking brown, but I love a brown lipstick, so sorry. And then I wear Vampire Love, which is a fairly newer shade too, more than I thought I would. Again, a very 90s deeper red. You could probably skew it more brown with the right lip liner. So good. I love this formula. It's so comfortable. I would say it is a little bit more sheer, even in the cream finish. Very comfortable. Can't beat the price point. I think you can get them anywhere from like $7 to $10 depending on where you buy them from. I just have been loving collecting them. I've been loving them for that grunge aesthetic, like I said, can't beat it. I should have started with this one. Circling back to Blend Bunny, their tinted lip oil in the shade Black Sugar. Like, tell me this isn't spooky lips. Tell me this isn't my namesake. I have said pretty recently on Twitter that I'm not the biggest fan of lip oils. Not that I'm not the biggest fan of lip oils. I'm sick of lip oils. I'm sick of every brand releasing lip oils. I feel like we got it. I got it. I got it. There's enough lip oils. Please stop. But this one is black slash gray, depending how you look at it. <laughs> that felt inappropriate to do. Oh, uh, the swatching is going to get a little rough here. I love what this does for the lips. Over a black base, over nothing, over another lip color to darken it, whatever. What this does is add edge to any look I do. It adds gothiness to any look I do. If I was walking the street and maybe my makeup didn't look that alternative, but I wanted to make sure the people around me knew this bitch is spooky and that was a priority for me. This is the kind of lip product I would wear because it gives your lips a sheer black perfect oh i love it i love it so much this is like the type of product i've been searching for for so long and it hasn't existed because if i want a flat matte bold opaque lip i'll wear a black liquid lipstick or something this is so gothy juicy sexy vampire-y maybe they're dead maybe they're a corpse maybe they're really cold kind of aesthetic and it's perfect. Even though I said I'm sick of lip oils, I do have a couple that I wear a lot. The NYX Fat Oil Lip Lip Drip. Ew, that's a gross name. But in the shade Status Update, which I think is the deepest shade and shocking it's a brown. Oh, I'm running out of places I can swatch. Oh God. It's a brown with like a good amount of red to it. Super easy throw it all over lip. It's so comfortable. It makes your lips look so juicy. It's more opaque than I think a lot of other lip oils on the market, which I think is why I like it because it feels more like a traditional lip gloss to me versus a thin lip oil. Two of the e.l.f. ones in the shades. Jam Session, which is the deepest shade. Honey Kiss, which is more like a brown. Can you tell that I have a type when it comes to these kind of lip products lately? Very thin, very hydrating, very comfortable. Has big juicy doe foot just like the rest of them. Not as opaque though. Not as opaque especially as the next ones. But it gives good color. It's nice and sticky. So it feels like these noises. So it feels like it's not going anywhere when you wear these shades. Yeah, definitely more what I would think of with a lip oil in terms of like thinness and hydratingness. Oh, we're getting rough with these swatches. Definitely thinner, less opaque, comfortable. Cannot claim, cannot confirm nor deny if they are similar to the Dior ones. People claim they're a dupe. I cannot speak to that because the day I buy a Dior lip oil is the day that hell fucking freezes over. I have to be honest with you. I'm not spending that kind of money on a lip oil. I fucked up, back to NYX. I have a bunch of these, but there's only one that is truly my favorite. I mean, they're all good. They're all, it's a color preference. But the NYX Fat Oil Slick Click Shiny Lip Balm, the names. This might be my favorite lip product of the last two years, truly. I love this so much. It's that formula that MAC did, that Tarte did, that a lot of brands are doing right now, where it's an emollient, waxy lip balm that is in a clicky pen that doesn't click back down, so you have to be careful with what you do. Oh my god, this is not, I'm not doing good with swatches. <laughs> I love this shade. This is the shade trending topic. This is a horrible swatch. I'm sorry. This 
you can't get it in a swatch, so just listen to my words. <laughs> this makes your lips look so juicy, luscious, shiny, Ugh, like because of the formula, because it's that waxy emollient, you can't get it back down in the tube type of formula, it looks so wet. So, like, juicy is truly the best word. I've never seen something look juicier on the lips than this fucking formula. I love this so much. I originally bought two on a whim at Target and then immediately had to place an order for more colors. And I do like all the colors, but this color is just my favorite and I can definitely see myself using all of it and getting another one. I love this deep chocolatey shade. It has some sparkle to it. Not all of the slick clicks have glitter in them this one does this is so good this is another lip product where it's like it's hard for me to reach for other things over this this tends to almost always be the exact product that i want and i've gone through a ton of this honorable mentions though to clinique almost lipstick in black honey which is not a new product it's not a new product at all i'm like the last person on earth to care about this product uh it went viral on tiktok because everyone figured out it was the lipstick that Liv Tyler wore in Lord of the Rings. So it was hard to get for a second, but I had had it in my collection. It's just a good, like, gothy bitch staple. And then off, oh God, this swatch is terrible. This is Clinique, but this is the e.l.f. dupe. The e.l.f. Black Cherry Sheer Slick. They basically are the same thing you can get one or the other. I will say I have two Cliniques. I have one that hangs around in my makeup and I have a smaller one that hangs out in my purse because I always want to have this with me. That's how much I love Black Honey. It's such a good, I don't know what else to put on my lips, but I need to throw on something kind of lip product. I love how it makes you look like you're in caught in the snow, cold in the winter. Like that's the best way to describe what it does. It's so good. And finally, last product. This video was so long. Lunar Beauty Gloss. Lunar Beauty Lip Gloss in the shade Moon. This is my go-to staple nude gloss. I love a nude lip where it looks like there's almost something wrong with me. Where it looks like, what is wrong with your face? Some, like something's not quite right almost like uncanny valley almost too pale and this is my favorite gloss to do that i think i'm not wearing it obviously but on all, i've changed my profile picture recently on all of my social medias this is what i'm wearing in every single one of those photos <laughs> every as if it's not all the same photo i really like this formula it doesn't really smell like anything i don't even know where i could swatch this this almost feels more like a lip oil it's so light so pale I love this formula. It's so comfortable. It's so slick. I think lip glosses tend to fall on a spectrum of slick to goopy. This is definitely more slick, more thin, more glidy, more slippy. Very comfortable. And I love the packaging. How there's like a diamond in the- I literally packaging. Good stuff, man. Again, Manny, I see you. I'm covered in lip product. But yeah, that's uh, that's about it. <laughs> I've been ranting for so long and I even like cut products out of what I wanted to talk about today. But I just had so much to say because I haven't seen you in a while and I want to tell you what I've been up to. What have you been up to? What have been your favorite products? Please let me know. If you like this video, if you like favorites videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. You can also follow me on my Twitter or my TikTok, at Spooky Lacey. I don't know how long I'm gonna be on Twitter because that is a sinking ship if you know you know, but I'm still there if you care. And if, especially if you've been like, wow, Lacey, where have you been for three years? What have you been doing? I've pretty much been on Instagram the entire time, so you can get a lot of clues there. And I would love to hit 10K on Instagram. I really would because I would love that stupid swipe up feature for my stories. I would love that. So if you could subscribe to me there too, that would be awesome. Please let me know what you think about these products in the comments. Let me know about any of my video ideas down in the comments. I'm so happy to be back. It is so beyond time for me to be back on YouTube and I'm so happy to be back. I've missed you guys. I know it sounds silly and YouTubers always say that, but I genuinely have. I've missed makeup. I've missed talking about makeup. I've missed this community so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy that you 
are watching me and that you were here for all of this. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys! <laughs> I almost forgot my outro, but I didn't.